I think I'm going slowly mad. So far, this hasn't been so bad. I talk to myself, but not real loud. I hardly ever draw a crowd. And with these new cell phones we've got, no one can tell if I'm mad or not. My name is Momo. I'm called the American Outsider. I'm sometimes called the Baby Beatnik. And I'm sometimes called the King of the Idiots. In the neighborhood, I'm called the King. I'm the King of the Idiots, but if you're going to be an idiot, it's best to be the King. That was a funny one. These are some books I did. All these cartoons. Mm, funny. Oh. Here it is, here. I also have a bunch that are dirty, which I don't try to publish. I do a lot of dirty ones. Here's another one of the dirty ones. I took your advice, go fuck yourself. And I drew this. Uh, the teacher I was working on my master's with was giving me a hard time. So in with my final paper, I uh, put this, <laughs> a copy of that. I've been celibate for nine years, so. It's gotten so bad lately that when I masturbate, I fake my orgasms. Those are my phone numbers. And uh, see, I'm a Luddite. I don't like using the phone or anything. And so I just write them down on the wall. Half of them I don't know who they are. Like that one, I have no idea who that is. I, you know, I have no idea who that is. Should we call some of them? <laughs> I'm scared to. I'm an abuse survivor. I was abused as a child, and so I reject the concept of power. I'm uncomfortable with power. I don't like anyone having power over anyone else. I was always funny and I was always, uh, you know, a happy-go-lucky child. And that's one of the ironies for me because basically I'm a comedian, but it's almost a cliche that comedians are super sad and I'm super sad. So probably all of these are like yelling at my parents who are both passed away by now. The dominance of evil reinforces the nihilism of the comic response. Thurber said, humor is terror reconsidered in a calmer moment. The real basis of humor is, uh, and then Freud said uh, that art is uh, describing a, a common wound. So, you know, I like uh, show tunes, I like ladies fashion, I like uh, design. I like this, I like that, I go, if it weren't for the sex, I'm gay, you know. <laughs> Back when I go to the porno shows, I, ne I don't even watch the gay, uh, the gay porno out of curiosity, but that might be that whole thing about insecurity too, you never know, as they say, but, I, you know, I don't want to have sex just to have sex, I don't want to have sex unless I'm actually interested in the person, something happening with the person, whatever, otherwise I'm happy with the porno, frankly, but. And, you know, I'm 62, I got bad teeth, and I don't have any money, so it's like, you know. <laughs> I do appreciate his ability to really uh, cut to the bone of uh, social situations and really cut a phrase that's really insightful in a lot of ways, without being too complex or too uh, over-intellectual. He's, he's pretty good that way. And, it, and that tends to be why we do the political and social satire. That's mainly what his work is about. My work is, tends to be more about emotions and situations. We're going for balance, color, and you know, um, it's, I think- it's just the raw energy of working together. Most people would have a hard time collaborating too. Collaboration's a hard thing. And uh, most people, they won't, their egos would be too, uh, defined that they would be able to work with somebody else, but we were able to work through that in the beginning, figure out how we were doing it. Yeah, yeah. My wife said that she loved me. That's what she would always say. She put no one above me, but then she went away. My wife said that she loved me, but then she went away. She didn't have much use for me, but she loves my DNA.